Hello and welcome back to the Rocket Stove development videos. In this video we're going to be looking at what I've done to help transfer the heat from the rocket stove on top down to the oven underneath. Also there's a little bit of insulation going on. Be right back in a moment. Now here you can see two different types of heat transference. These radiator fins were made at two separate times because I don't buy material. I have to wait until it falls into my lap. So luckily I've got a mate with a sheet metal shop. He allowed me in to pick up some scraps from behind the guillotine, put a fold in them and weld them onto the bottom of here. Now some people have been discussing on my earlier video whether angle or tube or box section or flat sheet would make the better radiating fin and really it just boils down to surface area so you make your mind up when you make yours you decide what you're going to put in there but it's down to surface area just remember that you need something that's going to work well and radiate the heat now over here I have used fireboard, which is the insulating panel that they put behind wood stoves on the walls of a home when a wood stove is fitted. This is quarter inch, six mil. I had some scraps of it lying around from previous installations. So I have attached that to the inside of the stove with high temperature silicon. High temperature silicon is Durable enough to be used on car exhaust manifolds, so I'm sure that it will be fine in a 200 degrees Celsius oven. So, I'm going to assemble this thing now, and we're going to have another play with it, and see what temperatures we can come up with. It rained all day the other day, so I couldn't do the job I'd planned to do. So I spent a couple of hours in the workshop making this. Now I've been looking at uh, pellet hoppers online and people have been making them out of perforated sheet, which I just can't seem to find any for nothing. But I've managed to make this. I found some stainless steel rod and experimented with various ways of putting it together. And uh, I did see this one a design similar to this on somebody else's YouTube channel. Can't remember whose it was, sorry, but I've got to give full credit to them for this idea, which is to stagger the loops so that the pellets, as they're fresh, are trapped within the cage, but as they burn at the bottom, the moment they start to get smaller, they will drop out, allowing other pellets to feed down. So, this will hold about four cups of pellets. I don't know how long that will last, but I'm about to drop it in and give it a test because, as I said, it's belted with rain for the last few days and I've got no dry firewood. So that's exactly the reason why I created this, so that we can cook using bought wood pellets if we have to. Let's go and give it a go. I've watched plenty of other people lighting pellet baskets with... Uh, these little handheld burner things and it's not fast uh, I've no doubt that you could put some accelerant or something in there to speed things up but it seems like it takes a good one to two minutes of continuous application of heat to get these things going so I'm just going to do what they do and it's, uh, it's starting to almost hold a flame after about one minute. I'll give it another one minute. I won't bore you making you watch it. But we'll flick the camera back on as soon as I've got this thing fired up and see how it goes. 
Wow, that took a while. Um, I have changed a couple of things. I knew that pellets would be a little bit harder to light than dry sticks. But one of the things I've changed is the length of the chimney. Somebody wanted to know how this thing would go as a camp stove with a short chimney rather than the chimney that I had on there which was twice this length. He said it was a hazard to uh, flight paths and aeroplanes. <laughs> so anyway, right, now we're down to a four foot chimney. Um, it's still pulling. It appears to be lit now. We'll see how it's... I'll let it settle in for a couple of minutes and then I'll um, start doing some temperature tests and we'll see how it goes. Well, that didn't go that well. Um, pellets are hard to light. They don't put out as much heat. And you have to buy the things. So we may play with pellets a little bit further down the track. But right now, I'm here with newspaper and twigs getting back into getting some serious heat into this thing so that we can test the oven. And if you've been watching some of the other videos, you'll realize that I've had a real problem getting the heat into the oven, and that's because heat rises. I'm really pleased with the results that we've been getting on the cooktop. The cooktop's just going nuts. I don't need any more heat there. The thing is, I've got to get the heat to go down. So as you will have seen in the other videos, I've introduced fins to the bottom of the stove to help transfer the heat and insulation to the oven. I've had loads of help from subscribers and watchers here on YouTube who have been helping me to find new ways to make this thing work better. Some of them are incredibly complicated and some of them are even expensive. I don't do expensive. I don't have an income. Most of what I do is done on favors and love and good luck. Uh, I'm trying the simplest ideas first and those simple ideas seem to be working. So once I've got this thing up and going, as promised, very shortly, when I'm sure that the thing is working well, there will be a full build video with measurements and tips and tricks. As I've shown in other videos, rocket fuel, bone dry sticks. For starting, you need, you need a selection of sticks that are no thicker than a pencil, and for general running, sticks that are no thicker than a man's thumb. If you have a few trees on your property, you'll have a never-ending supply of rocket fuel. I've had the fire going now for around 10 minutes and the stove is uh, just starting to come up in temperature. It's still got a long way to go, but uh, we're on the move. It's only been running for about 10 minutes but already the chimney is absolutely clean, no smoke whatsoever. Great for a bit of stealth cooking. So here I am again, fighting to get this thing up to temperature. Even though it makes gobs of heat, it's not heat in the oven. So to prove my point that all the heat is going upwards, I'm gonna put two insulating blocks on top of the cook plate and see if that will drive the heat down a bit. We'll see what happens then. Having just put these on the top, 
hopefully it's going to change the dynamics of the stove. Here we are at around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's give it five or ten minutes and see how putting the insulation on the top affects the heat in the oven. Well, here we are again after 15 minutes. It has raised the temperature, but um, it's nothing brilliant. I'd like to show you something that I've just discovered. If we look at this part of the stove, the actual cooking part, if I show you this, you'll see that here we've got sixty five degrees moving up seventy two seventy five seventy seven hundred and thirty five hundred and forty five hundred and sixty hundred and seventy that is the difference in heat over four inches. This is how much heat rises. Look at the gap through there. My top plate is so hot, it's warping. It's lifting these blocks up. Bending the plate, heat rises. The only way to get heat to go down is either with a forced fan, build the fire underneath, or use the drawer of a rocket stove to pull the heat down before it goes up in the chimney. This is going to involve a complete rebuild. What I might do is make a new top box, cut some insulation, Cut it down, make the top box only two inches tall instead of four inches tall and place that back on top of the oven and see what we get. Well, take a good long look at the temperature because that is as hot as it's going to get in this configuration. I've tried every trick and can't get it any order. So, not to worry, all of these components will live another life. The oven, I'm going to uh, use the oven in a new idea. The flatbed rocket stove, it's a winner, but only as a stove top, not as a power source for an oven. So, I think the stove can go and get pushed in the back of the shed and pulled out at a later date. The oven is going to get used in the next project. Wait till you see what I've got planned for that. And these aircrete bricks are going to be part of that project. So stay tuned and in about a week's time we'll have another video where I will be investigating the making of a nice masonry oven and cooktop based loosely around what the Spaniards and Portuguese have in almost every home. So stay tuned and keep watching Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources.